I want the families who are here today to know that we hear what they're saying, that we are not going to let them down. Their cry for help, their cry for focus of all of us on saving lives couldn't be clearer. They are right to hold us accountable. They're right to demand more. I feel so much for them, and I also have so much admiration that they are trying with all their might to protect others. They, in each and every case, have lost someone, and yet they are trying with all their might to make sure that we as a city lose no more people. And that is entirely noble, and they, to me, are moral arbiters in this fight, and we want to show them the kind of focus and commitment that they deserve. When I read about these horrible moments, when I read about these tragedies and this loss of life, it's very personal for me because I can see it through the eyes of my fellow parents, and of course, every one of us thinks, what if that was my child? And that is, in fact, how we have to make public policy and how we have to implement public policy with the notion in mind, what if it was my child? first obligation of government is to protect the health and safety of our people. And this is an area in which we simply have to do better. I said on Inauguration Day that we were here to make changes and we meant it. And this is an example of where we will act immediately. And I want to emphasize that we are making this statement just two weeks into this administration because we think there is an epidemic here. There's been an epidemic of traffic fatalities, and it can't go on, and the time to start change is now. According to the City Department of Health, being struck by a vehicle is the leading cause of injury-related death for kids younger than 14. It's the second leading cause of injury-related death for our seniors. In the past decade, 1,000 766 pedestrians were struck and killed on our streets. Almost 2,000 people lost in the last 10 years. 30,000 were hospitalized as a result of these crashes. Let me put this in perspective, and I think this is one of the most sobering statistics you're ever going to hear. We are so proud of the progress we've made in fighting crime in the city. We're so appreciative to the men and women of the NYPD. And last year, we had 333 homicides in New York City, which was a record low. 333 homicides, and yet we had 286 traffic fatalities. And that data is not 100% complete since the year just ended. Um, it is shocking to see how those two numbers correspond, and it makes clear how much more focus and energy we have to put on the issue of traffic fatalities. It's a public safety problem. It's a public health problem. It affects children. It affects seniors. It affects all elements of what we in government do on behalf of communities. Today I'm announcing the immediate formation of an interagency working group to implement Vision Zero. We've talked about Vision Zero. We've seen it succeed. In other countries, it is time to implement it here and now in New York City. So we're calling together the New York City Police Department, Department of Transportation, the Health Department, and the Taxi and Limousine Commission to make common cause to implement this plan. The message will be clear from uh, the top of our city government, from the top of each agency, that all agencies are expected to participate that every uh, individual works for these agencies. The four I've named in particular needs to be focused on this goal. The goal is literally to reduce fatalities on our roadways to zero. That is our singular focus. The working group comprised the leaders of each of these four agencies will report to me by February 15th with very specific and concrete plans that will include dedicating sufficient NYPD resources and personnel to deter the most dangerous behavior, particular particularly the behavior of speeding and failing to yield to pedestrians. We have planned to immediately improve at least 50 dangerous corridors and intersections. We intend to make that the goal for each year to improve 50 more. Uh, to begin the process immediately of reducing 
uh, the speed limit in a number of streets, a number of streets in our city, there's a number of streets that really should have a 20 mile per hour speed limit. We're going to delineate the plan to get that done and to develop a legislative agenda for traffic safety, including tougher laws that ensure that people who take a life because of negligence or because they are breaking a law are held accountable. We're not going to accept the notion that the different agencies are off on their own separate missions when it comes to this. We're going to demand that this be a common effort. Cameras that are being installed finally after years of this city asking of Albany the right simply to protect our own people and we finally begun the process, a nascent process of putting speed cameras in place. Uh, in the last few months these cameras have issued warnings. Starting tomorrow they will begin issuing tickets to enforce the speed limit in some of the most dangerous streets. And as I said, we fought long and hard to begin to put in the speed cameras we need. We need many more as part of our legislative efforts in Albany. We're going to fight uh, for the home rule right to install speed cameras and red light cameras wherever data shows that they will make our streets, our streets safer. Look, this is a right this city needs to have. We have to protect our people. We need to be able to do that quickly and in a focused manner. We should not have to constantly go to Albany and have our efforts limited when we're trying to protect our own people. Today I'd like to share with you some of the steps that we've been taking and that we'll be continuing to improve upon as we move toward the mayor's uh, goal uh, at the end of a month to have an expanded plan to address these issues. As you may be aware, uh, the department uh, implemented a, recently implemented a new policy to expand the number and type of collisions investigated. Many, many serious accident investigations involving serious injuries were not adequately investigated. As a result, there's been a major effort to try to improve the amount of resources that we can commit to ensure that all serious accidents involving serious injuries and fatalities are in fact investigated. Previously, the department only investigated collisions in which victims were likely to die. That threshold has been expanded to include critically injured as a category, increasing the number of cases we are investigating by approximately 20%. What that means is that in a serious accident, we will get there to gather the evidence as quickly as possible so that we don't lose that evidence. We have also increased the size and are in the process of increasing the size of our highway investigation unit. We are expanding from 180 to 270 personnel in that unit. We are currently at 210. We're in the process of recruiting and training 60 additional personnel. We are, as part of that expansion, increasing the number of investigators. These are the trained individuals that can go to these serious collision industries, uh, incidents. We are expanding that to six supervisors and 27 highly trained investigators. At the precinct level, we've trained more officers on laser speed measurement, LIDAR devices, in an effort to replace older technology. While all precincts are using some form of speed enforcement devices, we've upgraded 24 of them with these laser devices, and we'll seek to move forward eventually to having all precincts equipped with laser speed detection devices. In 2013, the department issued more than 83,000 summonses for speeding, a 16% increase from the prior year. We expect this year to increase it even further and hope to be significantly assisted by the speed cameras that the mayor is prioritized and is committed to acquiring. We are employing our traffic stat model to reduce accidents, similar to what we do in CompStat to reduce crime. The precincts are also being required to submit plans for pedestrian safety and discuss initiatives to increase pedestrian awareness and collision prevention. These will be incorporated into the initiative that the mayor just announced that will be going forward over the next 30 days. On the enforcement side, we've also identified seven hazardous violations that contribute to collisions and we are encouraging stricter enforcement of each by the department's members. They include disobeying a sign or traffic signal, improper turns, failure to yield to pedestrians, use of a cell phone or texting while driving and speeding. This is an effort that the mayor has prioritized and rightfully so. It's an effort that the police department is committed to. A life lost is a life lost, whether by murder or by traffic accident. 
and the department is committed to every way, shape, and form reducing the loss of life in the system. Today, actually, in my role at the United States Department of Transportation, soon making the transition to New York City DOT, but today's subject, saving lives on our streets, it's a top priority for U.S. DOT, and obviously it's going to be a top priority here for the mayor and, and New York City DOT. And I want to thank the mayor for his leadership on this issue. It's a particular honor for me to join an administration that has made transportation safety and Vision Zero such a top priority.